Okay, now let's uh, move on to the next subject here. We got, this is like one of my favorite subjects. I've been waiting to get to this one for quite some time. And we have some fun ones, some that I didn't even know. But we have some comic books to discuss. We're talking about recalled comic books. These are comic books that were so controversial for various reasons that the publisher said, no, stop them, pulp them, get rid of them, destroy them. Let's get into it. Absolutely. The first one we have is right off the bat. It's Spider-Man Reign, number one. Now you're thinking to yourself, Spider-Man recalled comics, what could that be? Well, this comic could have actually been in one of our other categories. This was recalled because of nudity in this comic book. There is an old aged Peter Parker and he is fully nude sitting on a bench and you can see, I'm going to say it, you can see Spidey's genitalia right there on full display. Yeah, Peter showing his Peter. And you know what? The publishers <laughs> were not happy about this. It was missed by editors, and they immediately went to reprint it, adding a shadow and trying to cover it up. But here's the thing. This is a comic book run. It's a four-issue miniseries, I believe, and it's fantastic. It is yeah. a story that I recommend for a lot of people because, for one, it's a little bit more mature because it's dark. We have kind of a harsh future where Peter accidentally kills Mary Jane post coitus because his, as they say in the comics, his radioactive fluids caused her cancer. Now, although that may seem a little ridiculous and is actually kind of revered as just a fantastic Spider-Man story, but it is overshadowed by some of these controversial themes and specifically that panel the editor missed. Yeah, and honestly, this book is widely available even though it was a recalled book there was many of this book out there to be bought in, and it's actually only selling for around six dollars that's not a lot to get a recalled book from a few years back an affordable comic book that has a little bit more of a story than just the good narrative in the pages but one that is kind of uplifted in the community because it's controversial aspects let's also discuss one that although didn't get recalled it kind of falls in line with the Spider-Man Rain comic book because of nudity overshadowing the content and how good it actually was. And I have a feeling that had this not been as popular, Bueller, it would have been recalled. Yeah, I think so. This is the Batman Dam number one is what we're talking about. And there was nudity in this one as well. Just like in the Spider-Man book, we actually get to see Bruce Wayne's genitalia in this one also. And the interesting thing about this book the preview copy of this book came out. It did not have it in there. But the retail copy, when it hit the shelves, had that in the book. It spread like wildfire. There was people buying this book in dozens. And you know what? Before they could even get the recall out, they were all gone. They were literally all gone. And they didn't bother doing a second print. They just waited and went on to issue number two. So the next book that we have to discuss is Legendary. I cannot tell you how many copies of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen issue number five I have flipped through just to see if the Marvel douche ad was inside. That's right. Have you had any luck finding it? I've never found one. Rumor <laughs> is, is that they were all destroyed prior to hitting the American shelves, but some DC packs are said to have them contained and a batch of shipment went overseas to the UK and has been confirmed to reach the public. These comics are out there, but what are we talking about? There is an ad for a hygiene product. It's, it's an ad that was placed in the back of the book. And then when the editor, Paul Levitz found the ad, he was concerned of potential litigation. So he decided to put a recall notice and then re-release the comic book with the word Marvel changed to amaze. Right now we're talking about the douche thing, which is a little different. But there's actually books out there right now that they're taking action against. Like Tommy Gun Wizards was one that they had to change the title because Tommy Gun is copyrighted. And the latest issue of that came out, it just said Wizards. So this is a normal practice, and I'm glad that they caught that. And he caught it before he could get sued by Marvel, because nobody wants that to happen. This book, like you said, is hard to find, but I did find one on CGC that was sold. It was a 9.2, and it sold for over $260. And something that I find just hilarious is that Alan Moore was published four months after this comic book hit the newsstands, and he had inserted in the art of this top 10 
publication, a character reading a newspaper, and the headline of the newspaper was Miracle Douche Recall. This is something that didn't just cause a stir among the publishers. This caused a stir among the creators as well. You gotta watch what you put in a comic book. You also have to watch what you put in the microwave, do you not? You always have to watch what you put in the microwave because when you turn your back, you never know what type of baby is going to crawl inside of a microwave because that happened in Elseworlds, 80-page giant that got recalled. There was a babysitter. It was Clark Kent, if I'm not mistaken, the baby Clark Kent, right? Yep, that's right. And the baby actually crawled into the microwave and it got zapped, was recalled because apparently this might have actually took place in reality. Recalled for not just the baby in the microwave scene, but you know what? It also shows like the other problems of dealing with the super infant, like the infant getting tied to the ceiling fan and spinning around in circles, or even the infant getting a hold of some electric cables and just nomming on them. You know, it was controversial. They didn't want to risk anything, but something that I found funny is that this story would actually go on to be revered and get awards because of how good it was. Yeah, and you know what? I looked it up, Tom, and there's actually sold copies of this raw book that have been sold for $256. Can you tell us about Weird Trips number two? This is a comic book that came out in 1978. Recalled Comics has been happening since the 70s. This was recalled because of the cover. It has Ed Gain on the cover, who is a serial killer, and he is actually eating people on the cover. He's got like a stew. He's using their bones as a spoon. And it's disturbing. And like you said, this book came out in 1978. So quite a long time ago. I didn't know about this. When you pointed it out, I was surprised. But I could see definitely why it would be recalled. Written by Greg Depsey and drawn by Bill Stout. This $50 comic book is amazing that it ever hit the stands at all. Because of how grotesque the cover is. It was only a dollar back then. But you know what? It told the tale of what inspired the films of Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's crazy this thing was produced. Normal books would cover this right away, but to see this in a comic book form and so close to that action that actually took place, it is surprising. So this next book that we have on the list, and honestly, this is one of my favorites, and this is going to be a great discussion. We have Swamp Thing number 11. This is a new 52 title, and the story behind this book is awesome. We have a bunch of quotes that we're going to mention, but honestly, you got to see this to believe this. That's right. We're talking about Marco Rudy. He was drawing Arcane. This is in Swamp Thing issue number 11. And Arcane is a tentacle type of creature. And he's emerging from beneath the swamp. And he's taking on Swamp Thing. And they're getting into a fight. And this story is so funny that we just got to read you some of these quotes here. So basically, Scott Snyder, the writer of this comic book, was sitting on panel at Heroes Con in Charlotte. And this is in 2012. He gets a text message from the editor at the time, Matt Idelson. And what does Matt tell Scott? He says he has to pulp the comics. He has to actually get rid of every one of them. Scott says, Matt, why? Why do we have to get rid of all of them? So this is actually the quote from Matt. So one of Arcane's tentacles looks a little dickish. He looks a little dickish and Scott's like, what? What are you talking about? So Scott says, yo, you need to send me these panels. So he's getting these panels. Can you imagine like he's on a panel and he's getting panels? It's Inception style. And he goes, okay, he, I kind of see it. He's going through the page and he's, and he's like, okay, I guess I can see they're kind of phallic shaped. But still, you got to pulp the issues, like all of them. And then Matt's like, no, 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 Scott, no, look at panel four. And, and Scott, he looked at panel four, and I think he had your response, Bueller. So my response is, uh, yeah, you need to get rid of these books. <laughs> so this is hilarious because Scott Snyder would go on to admit that this whole debacle was his fault from the get-go because he was reminded that he told Marco, the artist, specifically, this is the quote, for more tentacles, if possible, in panel one and panel four. So in a way... He had created the penis tentacle that had ruined my own book. Scott did it to himself. That's awesome. And Tom, you say that a lot better than I do. But if you look at panel number one, I could see where that would be kind of brushed by. Maybe every now and then you might be, oh, well, something's going on there. But panel four is clearly 
How does that get past press? Oh, that's crazy. It's crazy, man. But it's comics like these that just make me chuckle. And, you know, it's recalled stories like this that give them just a another reason to enjoy them because it brings up conversation. It's a little bit of comic history. And holy smokes, like how, how funny are some of these things? Because the creators, they get involved in the conversation, and that's what makes them real special. I encourage the community to check out the controversial comics category section on Key Collector. There are are a bunch of comic books that are controversial for the reasons why we discussed, but a plethora of other ones. And you got to know them because these are actually available on the hunt because a lot of these, there's little minute details that make them controversial. And if you know what they are, you know what to look for when you are presented the opportunity to get them possibly on the cheap. That's right. And I always use the Key Collector app. It's got the section for these books right there. And it tells you what to look for because a lot of these recalled books, they were replaced with other books. Now you know exactly what to look for if you have the Key Collector app. That's right. Use code TOM101 to unlock a free week subscription to unlock the full service of the app. I'm confident you're going to find one comic book that's going to end up paying for the service in its entirety.